praise you, Lord. I owe you my life. Can praise you enough, even if I tried, cause you've been so good to me. Lord, you are good, you've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. You've been. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good to me. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so kind. You've been so loving. You've been so good. You've been. so good and I'm so grateful that you've been so good you've been so good saying you've been so good you've been so good Oh, praise the Lord and happy Sabbath, Seabrook. Oh, come on, I said praise the Lord and happy Sabbath, Seabrook. Oh, it's International Day. It should be louder than that, Seabrook. I said praise the Lord and happy Sabbath, Seabrook. But we please stand to our feet as we sing our opening song right here. Say something good. Something good's about to take place. Right here. Right here. Right here. It all happens today, right here, right here. 
Amen. You may be seated, Seabrook. Amen. Let us look to the Lord at this moment. God, we know that you are right here. We feel and we sense your presence in our midst, O oh God. We thank you for the joy that attends this day. As we celebrate, O oh God, all of our nationalities, our diversities, our cultures. We praise you and we give you the thanks, Lord, for you have brought us this far. Now be with us throughout this worship service. Let your name be glorified and let us be blessed. But well, we ask it in Jesus' name. Let everyone say, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's praise God, everybody. Let's put our hands together for the Lord today. What an awesome God we serve. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Now we've got some people several people who are going to do a special welcome, so I'm not going to say too much. I do want us to just maybe just welcome each other, if that's okay. Oh, and be, even before we do that, I do have to say this. We have a very special birthday today. In fact, we, we've had special birthdays all week. Pastor Natalie's birthday was Wednesday, I think it was. Pastor Natalie. <laughs> Pastor Natalie. And my, my youngest son, his birthday was yesterday, Aiden Johnson. Praise God. And, and uh, guess whose birthday is today? No, not mine, not mine. See, y'all supposed to know my birthday. Uh, who is that that said mine? Oh, I'm gonna find you. Pastor Jimmy Munoz, come on, let's give God a hand for Pastor Munoz. <laughs> Stand up, Pastor Munoz. <laughs> I asked him, I asked him if he was 50 yet. He said, no, somewhere around 26. I said, okay. <laughs> All right, well, listen, why don't we just greet each other and then we're gonna have some special welcomes in a minute. But let's welcome each other right now. Come on, come on, get up. Give each other a warm greeting today. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy so easy so easy so do it love oh, the Jesus in me love the Jesus in you yeah. the Jesus in you the Jesus in me so oh. Amen. Well, we got one of the main planners of our international day, Sister Carol Carrington. Hey, give the Lord a hand. And I'm going to turn the mic over her for some very special welcome. Hey, hey, Seabrook. What time is it? It's International Day. So, International Day. I'm supposed to tell you, welcome. If you're a visitor, please come again. But it's International Day, and we just can't speak in English. So I have some friends to help me. And um, there is somebody out there who is willing to welcome us in Jamaican Patois. 
can I see, where is she? Okay, can you give it to us in Jamaican Patwa? Morning everybody, how no do? What a way on a pretty, on a pretty dandan. Have a happy Sabbath, everybody. Okay, so we have Cameroon in the house. She's gonna welcome us in Mancon. And all the way across the, in the ocean is from India in Tamil and Urdu. Well, this is Hindi, which is a national language. Namaste. Swagat. Tamil is my, some say uh, Tamil, we say Tamil, is the, my mother tongue. And Wanakam is welcome in Tamil. And happy Sabbath. <laughs> Okay, parlez-vous français, anybody? French? Bienvenue à l'église adventiste de Seabrook. S'il vous plaît, revenir encore. Et encore, et encore. Amen. Okay, and then last but not least, we have Peru. We're going to hear it in Spanish. Feliz sábado a cada uno de ustedes. Bienvenidos y vengan nuevamente. Now, can I see the hand of all the visitors? Would you be willing to stand? Just where you are, stand so we can see you. Now, Seabrook, on my count of three, I want us all to say to the visitors, welcome, come again. One, two, three, welcome, come again. I love that. Wasn't that wonderful? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand, a big hand again. Yes, we want to welcome everyone, everyone, everyone to our inter International Day weekend. Because remember, tomorrow is Taste of Seabrook. You don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. Amen. We have one more person who wants to just greet us and, and say welcome to us. Uh, he is a candidate for the U.S. Senate. Also, Oakwood, went to Oakwood University, went to Washington at Venice University. Uh, he is a Seventh-day Adventist. Marcellus Cruz. Come on up and just greet the people, Marcellus. Hello, church. I also worked at the GC for 15 years. <laughs> uh, first, I would like to thank the pastor, the elders, the deacons, the deaconesses, and you for welcoming me here. Um, I would also like to commend you for your community service along with International Day. From what I understand, this is the first one since the pandemic. So amen. And look at you. You look beautiful. I just want to say a few words. It's simple. I've been called. And people ask me, why? How do you know you've been called? And a still small voice just comes to my mind every time. Joseph. Moses. Ezra, Daniel, even Barry Black. These are people who serve in peculiar places. So when you're called, you answer the call just like you are doing. And finally, I want to leave you with this. Someone said to me, how do you know God is talking to you? Now, I don't know about you, but I, I know that voice. A cousin of mine was coming into town. And she says, I'm going to come to your house around 2.30. Now, 
Now that day, I was out, you know, meeting and greeting. So when I got home at 2.30, I'm like, oh, I got to prepare for my cousin. She texts me and says, hey, can I come over at 5? I said, all right, I can take a little nap. So while I'm laying down, I said, I don't want to oversleep, so I'm going to try not to go into deep sleep. But I go to sleep, and I start to dream. How many of you all dream? I have very vivid dreams. But in this one dream, I realized I was dreaming. Have you ever realized that you're dreaming? So in my dream, I said, God, is this, are you talking to me? Is this something you want me to do? And he says, yes, this is something I want you to do. And you know, you don't want to do it. So you're like, okay, God, okay, let me say it again. Is this something you want me to do? And then I heard a voice say, I'm talking to you and she's coming. Soon as that voice said that, my watch, my smart watch buzzed, and my phone buzzed. And I woke up, and I looked at my phone, and my cousin said, I'm on my way. After that, I said, God, I won't doubt you. I will go boldly and do the thing that you asked me to do. So church, I need your prayers. So when he returns, we can look up, and he says, well done, my faithful servant. Amen. 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 Let's keep Marcellus Cruz in our prayers. We also want to keep Wade, our keyboardist, in prayers. He's going to be away quite a while. He actually happens to be uh, Cruz's communication director. So let's keep him in our prayers. We've enjoyed having you with us, man. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Well, we got, some, we got some treats for you. We got some, this is going to be a blessed service. Hold on to your hats, whatever it is you got on your head. God, did I say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. But hold, hold on to your seats. God is going to bless you real good. Y'all ready to sing? Come on, what are we singing? We marching to Zion? All right, let's ring it out. Let's stand. Let's ring it out before God. Children of the heavenly king may see their joys abroad, may see their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching, marching to Zion, the beautiful, the beautiful city. I want to hear you sing the third verse, church. Beautiful, 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 beautiful side. We're marching upwards. That beautiful, beautiful for the one last time. Oh, we're marching. Oh, beautiful, 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 beaut
You may be seated, Zebra. Just ready? So. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. And welcome to our Parade of Nations. Before we get started, Wayne and I want to say to you, please forgive us if we mispronounce anything in regard to your country. We're doing our best, and we're not from your country. So please... Bear with us. Okay, so Navalette, we're gonna get started with our Parade of Nations. And we hope that you are blessed and that you notice the diversity within our church body. So, the first country on the list that's coming up is the United States of America, my home. Lady country, yay! United States of America, the Star Spangled Banner. Land of the Grand Canyon, NASA, Hollywood, the Statue of Liberty, Times Square, the Empire State Building, Central Park and Hot Dogs, Home of the Free, Land of the Brave, Land of Freedom and Opportunity, the United States of America. Next, we have the Republic of Barbados. Oh, I'm sorry. Antigua and Barbados. Bar okay. The land of 365 beaches. Nelson's Dockyard National Park. Mount Obama. And saltfish and fungi, which is mushrooms. <laughs> Antigua and Barbuda. Next, we have Bermuda. Oh, Bermuda's not with us today. Barbados comes next. The Broken Trident, Land of the Fly Fish, Harrison's Cave, and White Sand Beaches. British Virgin Islands, the Union Jack. BVI is known for its numerous white sand beaches, coral reefs, Tortola Pier Park, and the J.R. O'Neill Botanical Gardens, the British Virgin Islands. The Republic of Cameroon, the Republic of Cameroon. Cameroon is Africa in miniature. Because of its geographical and diverse culture, with about over 200 languages, in any one day, a Cameroonian will speak in six different languages. The Republic of Cameroon. Canada. The Maple Leaf. Canada, the Maple Leaf. Widely known for its famous maple syrup, its iconic mousse, its ice hockey, and lacrosse. Canada. The Republic of Colombia. El Bandero Na El Tricolor Nacional. Colombia is the world's source of emeralds. <laughs> and is the third largest coffee producer after Brazil and Vietnam. The Republic of Colombia. Next we have uh, the Republic of Costa Rica. Costa Rica is known for its incredible natural wonders, rich biodiversity, aromatic coffee, and beautiful rainforests and beaches. Costa Rica. 
followed by Costa Rica is Dominica. Dominica is home of the Caribbean's highest peaks, many waterfalls and lakes. Indigenous people still reside there. There are nine volcanoes on the island, sulfur springs, and black sand beaches. Dominica. Next, we have the, Dep uh, the Republic of the Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic is known for its beachfront resorts. In fact, in Putacana alone, there are over 90 all-inclusive resorts. The DR is also known for its exceptionally talented basketball players. Dominican Republic. Next, we have up Ghana. Ghana is famous for its spirited culture, captivating music, dance forms, historical landmarks, Cape Coast, Coast Castle, and impressive football legacy. Ghana. Grenada. Grenada is a tri-island state and it's known widely for its spices. Cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and all the lot of spices. It has beautiful, amazing beaches, magnificent waterfalls, and of course, Grenada, you will find the first on the water sculpture park, Grenada. The Cooperative Republic of Guyana, my place of birth. The Golden Arrowhead, the Golden Arrowhead, land of many waters, the land of the quietest waterfall in the world, Kaichor, and it's also five times the height of the Niagara Falls, the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Haiti. When we hear about Haiti, it's always negative and nothing uplifting. But Haiti is the first country in the Caribbean to gain its independence and the, fir the world's first black republic. Haiti is known for its numerous white sand beaches, the resilience of their people, and of course, the cuisine of Haiti, the Republic of Haiti. India, the Republic of India. India, the tricolor flag, the land of unity in diversity. India, the land of the innov in innovation of chess. Also, we get yoga coming from India and the language where the first Christian religions came from India. The Republic of India and the world famous Taj Mahal. Next, we have up Jamaica. <laughs> Green, black and gold, land of reggae, Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Gregory Isaac, Shaggy and Sean Paul, Rastafarianism, lifestyle, world's fastest sprinters, Usain Bolt, Merlene Ate, Asafa Powell, Jerk Sauce, Aki, and Saltfish, Jamaica. Next, we have the Republic of Kenya. Land of the Great Rift Valley. The first woman to win a Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Mount Kenya, second highest in Africa. The world's largest desert lake. The world's best long distance runners. The world's best safari destination, Kenya. Next, we have the Republic of Malawi. Malawi is known for its extraordinary freshwater lake, Lake Malawi, which dominates the landlocked country. It is also known for having some of the happiest people in Africa, Malawi. Next, we have the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Nigeria, as we know, is in West Africa, and it shares borders with Chad, Niger, Cameroon, and Benin. Its capital city is Abuja, 
and Nigeria has an approximate population of 214 million people. They have no official language, but the most common language is English, Aruba, Hoi. Also, Nigeria is known for its oil production, business spirit, and of course, their cuisine. The Republic, Federal Republic of Nigeria. We now have the Republic of Panama. Panama is known as a transit country because of the Panama Canal. Its natural attractions include biking, bird watching, white water rafting, and because of its biodiversity, Panama is said to have three times higher diversity than United States, Canada, and Europe combined. The Republic of Panama. Next, we have the Republic of Peru. The, Co the Coca Canyon. If the Grand Canyon is on your bucket list, then the Coca Canyon is a must-see. The Rainbow Mountains, Amazon Jungle, and today the popular Peruvian chicken. Peru! Next, we have the wonderful Republic of Sierra Leone. Known as West Africa's beach destination, home to stunning white sand and untouched rainforest, and well known for its diamonds, Sierra Leone. We next should have the St. Vincent and the Grenadines. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. St. Vincent, the gem, the gem of the Caribbean. It's known for its breathtaking, fine beaches, waterfalls, the volcanoes, and of course, the warm culture of the Caribbean people, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Republic of South Africa. The Union flag. The Union flag. The home to the late Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. South Africa has three capital cities, one for the judiciary, one for economics, and one for the legislative. 11 languages and 21 national parks recognized by UNESCO, the Republic of South Africa. The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The sun, sea, and sand banner because of its African and Indian cultures, they're best known for 47 different species of birds. And we also have Trinidad and Tobago, the Twin Island Republic, the land of the hummingbird, and the land of steel pan, Trinidad and Tobago. Next, we have the U.S. Virgin Islands. The U.S. Virgin Islands are known for their white sand beaches, Megan's Bay, and Truck Bay and deep water harbors. They're made up of four islands, St. Thomas, St. Croix, St. John, and Water Island, the U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> Followed by the United Kingdom, the Union Jack. The United Kingdom is known for its sports and literature, soccer, Rugby, cricket, boxing, and golf was also invented in the United Kingdom. It's also known for the royal family, stunning castles, and fish and chips. The United Kingdom. The Republic of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is known for its beautiful landscape. The Zambezi and Limpopo rivers, Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of our world, the largest in the world, and its rich diversity and a very rich wildlife and a rich history of its people, the Republic of Zimbabwe. We will now have the United Nations. The United Nations was established just after the Second World War in 1945 and it was instrumental by the late President Franklin Roosevelt. 
The United Nations was established so we can have some peace in the world. Despite today, we still don't have any peace, but it's an organization that will help us to have some peace. The United Nations. At this time, we would like you all to stand and we would like to have a moment of silence. We would like to remember our world. There's conflicts in different parts of our world today and we want to also remember those who've been killed by gun violence in our society. So we now have a moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. Welcome again to our International Weekend at Zero, the land of diversity. Just for the day, the Living Word Trio, Living Word Trio. So we're going to do one, we're going to do a verse, and then y'all going to come in with us. Is that all right? Anywhere with Jesus. Here we go. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below. Anywhere without him, dearest joys would fade. Anywhere with Jesus, I am not afraid. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. All right. If you really know that you can go anywhere with Jesus, we want you to join with us. Come on, ring it out real loud. Anywhere. Anywhere with Jesus, I am not alone. Other friends may fail me, he is still my own. Though his hands will lead me on a weary way. Anywhere with Jesus is a house of praise. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus, I can say, me. Oh, y'all sounded good. You sounded good. We're going to really ring it out. Stand up and ring it out. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Anywhere. Anywhere. Hey. Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep. When the darkness shadows run about me creep. Knowing I shall wake and never more to roam. Anywhere with Jesus will be home sweet home. Anywhere. God, y'all did good. Y'all did good. Thank you for the support. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We're going we're gonna to have our prayer time. 
And y'all get ready for more singing now. But we're going to have our prayer time at this time. We're going to invite our elder to come. We know there's always things going on in our lives. But God is able. Amen? Amen, amen. God sure is able. Amen? Amen, amen. We just want to ask you to please, this is a full house. And so we're going to ask you to do in the islands as we say, small up yourself. Small up yourself, please. And we want to be able to allow some more people to fit. So if you're holding, if, if, if there's a baby, or to put the baby in your lap. If you have your bags in the chairs, let's put them on the ground. Let's try to make some more space to maximize. Yeah, yes, maximize our capacity. In addition to that, we have an overflow room um, that would be to your left in the back, in the back there, so there's other space as well. God is so good. And as I'm looking around, as I'm looking around at all of the bright colors and the beautiful flags and the head wraps and everything, it's just a reminder of how intentional God is. God is an intentional, good God. He's a diverse God. And so right now, we have an opportunity to pray to the God that has made all of us. And even though we are diverse, with many different challenges, with many different needs, many different wants, at the end of the day, we can be united in prayer. Praise the Lord. And so right now, we are going to have our dear elder Njoku, who will usher us into prayer. God can heal, he can, and he can mend your, your, he has a miracle. Chukuna non eligue Otito drea hage Cochichi gibia Que muche no wa Que se mia nelligue Father God Papa Big Daddy Thank you Thank you Thank you for this small reminder of what heaven will look like. Father God, we thank you for just giving us a glimpse of your love and diversity. For just letting us see what you saw the first day. You said it was good. Father God, we thank you for this week. The trials of this week. We thank you for the successes of this week. We thank you for bringing us through all the storms of this week. Father, today, your children at Seabrook have gathered once more to just spend a little time with you. And we bring our joys, our sorrows, our challenges. As our faces are different and our originality, our different, we also bring the concerns from our homeland. Father God, each one of us, each one of the nations mentioned here, have their issues one or the other. And as we have families in those nations, we still have to reflect back. And so we pray, not just for ourselves today, but also for the families that we left behind. 
Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here in the United States. The life that we are able to make and create here in the United States. We don't want to take that for granted. And so we pray for this nation that we've made our home now. But a God, the nation is in turmoil. But we're going to put it in your hand because we trust and believe that you will make it right. But a God, just this week, there's all sorts of devastation all around the world. Fires, earthquakes, Storms, flooding, hurricane, tornadoes, healings, and yes, uh, even people showing up at the jailhouse. Father God, we put it all in your hands. You know the beginning from the end. And we just trust that you will help us to make it through all these challenges. Father, this week and this week alone, we have families that are mourning loss of loved ones. We pray that you will come by them and comfort them. We have those in our family also here that are sick and shut in. We present them to you as well. We have yet some individuals in here who are about to go to surgery. Even this week, Father God, you are the great healer. And so we trust them in your hand that you will guide the hands of those who will be working on them. Father God, you have families in here. Yes, we have pretty clothes on. Yes, we're looking really nice and lovely. But Father God, you know the behind the scenes situation that's going on in the family. And so Father God, I just ask that you would just touch somebody in that family. You know exactly who you need to touch, Father God. I pray that you would touch that person that will cause the change and break that chain of hardship. Father God, break the chain of financial despair. Father God, break the chain of depression and all sorts of issues that families may be dealing with today. Father, this committee, the International Day Committee at this church, they have worked tirelessly. They've spent hours away from their families. We just want to present them today and say thank you for the work. We want to present other ministries also within this church. Father, now we pray in a special way for our children who are returning back to school. Father, school is not the way it used to be before where we know that they go in there and they are safe. <laughs> now the school has become the street. Father God, we ask that you will build a hedge of protection around our children, Father God. Protect them from the enemy's plan. Father God, be with them as they're going and they're coming. Let no harm come against them. And may they gain the knowledge that you want them to gain and to use that knowledge to your glory. Father, as we continue in this celebration, we've come here to celebrate the diversity, but we also have come here to listen to your word, to get a word from you. And yes, so you've prepared Pastor Graham to be the one chosen today. You've used them before in a mighty way. Father, use them again today. We ask that you bless him and his family. Bless our pastors also as they have shown us their new skill of singing. May it continue and never fail and to stop today. May we see more of that singing in the future. And we say these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. God has a He has And He has made
Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Wow. My name is Akachi Imegu, and I'm having a wonderful day today. You all look wonderful. Are you having a good day? I'm not sure. I just heard a little bit of a yes. Are you having a good day? That's good. Hmm, you know, there's a little girl who's not having a very good day. And she wants to tell you her story. Do you want to hear it? You do? Okay. Well, I'm gonna go back there and see if she's ready to tell you the story. So you gotta put on your listening ears. That's right, okay. Boys and girls, it's Lily here. You know what, boys and girls? I have a little problem. Earlier today, teacher told the class that she had a big announcement, and I got really excited when she said that. I couldn't wait for her to reveal the special news. I thought she was gonna give us extra recess, or even a field trip, but I was really wrong. It wasn't extra recess or a field trip like I hope. Instead, it was a new student. And when the teacher brought the new student in the classroom, I was shocked. She didn't look anything like me or the rest of my classmates. Her hair was different, her face was different, her skin color was even different, and she was the tallest person in the class. And then the teacher assigned her to sit right next to me. I did not want her to sit next to me. Today was not a good day at all for me, and I don't want to go back to school tomorrow. Ugh. Hi, Lily. How was school today? Well, not so good, Grandpa. There's this new girl in our class, and, well, she looks different, really different. Everything about her is different, and she's taller than anyone else in the class. And teacher made her sit right next to me. Grandpa, I don't want to sit next to her. You don't? Why not? Well, she's different. She doesn't look like me or anyone else in the class. And different is strange. Oh, I understand. By the way, Lily, did you have art class at school today? Yeah, I did, Grandpa. At least that was one good thing that happened to me today. I was a little frustrated because I couldn't reach the special paints on the top shelf, but at least I got to use the new crayons. Well, I believe those box of crayons might help solve your problem. Huh? How will a box of crayons possibly help me with my bad day at school? 
Well, each crayon in the box is a special and unique color. Red, blue, violet, orange, yellow, green. But yet, they are all crayons. Just like you and the new girl at school may look different from each other, but you are both created and dearly loved by God. Hmm, Grandpa, are you saying that God loves her as much as he loves me? Of course, Lily. God loves everyone no matter what they look like or where they come from. Let's hear what God says in his world in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That covers people all over the world, people of different colors, languages, and cultures. God loves us all, and very dearly. Hmm, thanks, Grandpa. I understand now. You know what? Tomorrow, when I go back to school, I'll get to know the new girl and help her around class. Hey, maybe she can help me reach the special paints on the top shelf. Boys and girls, isn't God's love awesome? It's amazing. God loves everyone, no matter what we look like. And you know what? I wanted you to know that when we get to heaven, you're going to see people from all over the world there. Do you think I made that up? No. How do you think I know? because it's in the Bible. That's right. The Bible says, actually, can you come up here? I want you to read what the Apostle John saw when he had a little peek of what heaven looks like. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, this is what he saw. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, stand before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with ripe robes, with palm branches in their hands. That is wonderful. Jesus wants us to be in that multitude. All right, so can I get two volunteers to pray? Okay, come. And let's pray that Jesus would make us ready. Come. Three volunteers, four. Dear Jesus, thank you for everyone helping everyone to travel here. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for creating everybody. Amen. Amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for our families and the people who came here to this church to worship God and Jesus. I hope we have a good day today and another day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. One more. Dear Jesus, thank you for the Sabbath. Please prepare us. Praise for heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. church family. Please stand for the scripture reading. It will be taken from Luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 37. 
Are we reading in English? And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26. He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Verse 27. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. Verse 29. But he said, wanting to justify himself, and said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Verse 30. Then Jesus said and answered, A certain man went down to Jerusalem from Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. The rest is going to be read in Zolo. Verse 31. What a boga guessa um priesti or tealing a leon zella, what he emborna wam guemela. Ganjalo nom levi, a figure of leon dower emborna wam guemela. Kepa um samaria or tealle, always in the lane wa figure guye wati, uguba ambone, wam haugel. Why a guye wam bopa among my barke? A what telling a mafoot and a waini, wam quellisa esluan in his sake. Wamusa and Lini, yes, the ham be one dinner. Gango Musa, who are keeper or denarii ababili, Wabaniga umnini, who are to go ye, Mgine, Naloko, Oweleke Gelayo, Gia Gubuisela Gue, Egubuye Niguami, Gumupi, Gogubana Guaco Gulaba Abatatu, or Wabanguma Kelwane Wake, or what Telega Pagasi was dwelling well in now. Sati ye law or womenzela is a how, why a set who jest to go so. Hamba wins in Jalo now, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the speaker of the hour, Dr. Paul Graham. For some of us, he is no stranger to Seabrook. See, back in 2002, he was our guest speaker at the very first youth church service at our Seabrook Activity Center next door. And in 2005, he was the host of our very first Friday Night Live program. Dr. Graham was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, born by, with some West Indian pa uh, parents, uh, yes, I wanted you to say that. <laughs> he also has a twin brother who is in pastoral ministry. As a youth, he has been a proud product of Adventist Christian education. He attended Greater New York Academy, Oakwood College, now known as Oakwood University, and Andrews University. Dr. Graham is married to Wendy Spence Graham. And Wendy's here, we have stand, please. Thank you. And they are proud parents of two young adult children. For 13 years, he had the opportunity of pastoring in Northeastern Conference in New York City, and is now currently here at Potomac Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. He also has the privilege to be an adjunct professor at Washington Adventist University and is excited about teaching on a university level. Dr. Graham is also a certified life coach, and he completed his doctoral studies at Liberty University in the area of ministry leadership. 
Dr. Graham most recently served as Associate Director of Pastoral Ministries for Potomac Conference, and he is now currently the pastor of Community of Hope Church, where he continues his passion to help churches experience revitalization. Thank you. <laughs> well, he has spent 25 years and counting in pastoral ministry, including being the senior pastor of Restoration Praise Center, affectionately known as RPC. <laughs> Through God's tremendous blessings, Dr. Graham, as the lead pastor, guided and nurtured RPC through its infant stages and helped to develop that church to be among the top churches in Potomac Conference. This is a major accomplishment in this area because not even the officials of the Potomac Conference expected that type of growth. His preaching style is fascinating. To our online viewers, we have a pretty good audiovisual team. But let me tell you, don't get upset with them because Pastor Graham does not stand at the podium all throughout the sermon. He may go from side to side, he may run down the aisle. So please, online viewers, do not get too upset, all right? It's a tough job for the AV today. His intensity in preaching is to present each unique message with the intention of motivating each listener to prepare themselves for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 2002, Dr. Graham launched Full Circle Ministries to empower youth and young adults and engage them in to participate in evangelism and have wholesome activities reaching both the church and the unchurch individuals. It is through this platform that Friday Night Live was born, one of the most unique forms of worship experiences for our youth. And on April of 2005, with his permission, we adapted the name and started Friday Night Live right here at Seabrook Church. <clears throat> Dr. Graham loves teaching the Word of God and helping as many as possible gain a better understanding of the gospel, as well as a stronger walk with the master and creator of the universe. Following our special music by our praise team, the next voice you will hear is that of the adjunct professor of Washington Adventist University and pastor of the Community Hope of Seventh-day Adventist Church, a humble servant of God, your friend and mine, Dr. Paul Graham. Hear he him. Oh, praise the Lord and happy Sabbath, Seabrook. Oh, come on, it's International Day. I said praise the Lord and happy Sabbath, Seabrook. So when we did the Parade of Nations, I heard a lot of Jamaicans are in the building. So I know, me personally, I'm a Jamaican, born and raised. I came here in 2010, and I know we got some rhythm in our body. So can I get a few people to just stand up on your feet and just rock side to side and think about the nice cool beaches, maybe a coconut water, whatever it may be, just think about it. It's a simple song, I promise you know the song. Yeah. The song says, Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord God Almighty reigns. That's all the song says, Zebra. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. 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 For the Lord. Oh, 
y'all sound good. See, we're going to take it back to the top. But this time I want to hear the congregation sing it. So here we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sing Halle, hallelujah. 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 For the Lord. Yeah. Sing hallelujah. I got one more. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. Oh, come on, y'all know the song, Zebra. And he said, he said, he would not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord, the Lord who keepeth me, He will not slumber nor sleep. Sing, O oh, the, O oh, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon, upon. nor the moon and he shall preserve even forevermore
stay right there. It's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou has taught me to say. You know it as well. Can you sing? It is well with my with my soul. Sing it is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Sing it is well. Every day that I wake up. everybody it is good to be in the house of the Lord amen? amen and it's and it's good to get a seat also I was in a meeting the other day and I want to share this with you that I know that you're packed today but you are one of the only churches I better be careful this is recorded right this is one of the only churches one of the only churches in this area that still have to usher people in and find seats. Um, I am, I'm going to say this in this level. I am proud of this church. I'm proud of the tenacity of this church. I'm proud of how you can take something and make nothing out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited how you can take something and Let's take nothing and make something out of it, Pastor Johnson, Jimmy, and that you can make something out of the three of them. I don't know. You know. You know, Natalie came up, I'm sorry, Pastor Natalie came over to me and she knew I was having a good time with my Jamaican, you know, um, uh, emblem with me. She come over with her Bahamian flag and and said, before you go up there, let me anoint you with her flag. And I'm, going to tell, I'm going to tell you this. She started off as a mentor. I mean, me being a mentor to her. But I'm going to tell you, she's one of the, the one, one fun person to hang out with and to talk to and, to, uh, and just to hear. Very wise woman also. Very wise woman also, Pastor Natalie. 
And um, uh, Jimmy is a wise individual, Pastor Jimmy. If you want to find anyone who is, and I'm not saying that your other two pastors are not caring, but, the, but this man is a caring pastor. It's a caring pastor. Also want to share with you that um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to give him the accolades that, that you already know about him. But you know, sometimes when I go certain places and, and, and they say, we talk about Seabrook. Let me, let me look, where's Sister Johnson? Where is she? Where's Sister Johnson? Where is she? Where is she? All right, just, just, we're friends. We're friends, okay? All right, good. That, you know, the, the ladies say, mm. They don't even watch him for the sermon, you know. They just, they say, I like the way he flipped the pages. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pastor Johnson, wonderful leader, awesome leader, awesome leader. And when you are able to pastor not just people, but also cultures, and be fair about it, that we know that God has lent him, lent him to you for such a, lent him to you for such a time as this. I just wanted to upset you. No, there's, no, there's no rumors. There's no rumors. For all those who are in the overflow, um, that's what the, we say that that's where the Holy Spirit is, in the overflow. <laughs> well, not today. So anyway. <laughs> I have the wonderful opportunity to, uh, and I want to thank um, uh, 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 Leslie uh, Bridges for his introduction. Man, I was wondering, who are you talking about? You know what I mean? But um, I want to thank you. Thank you. You said doctor so many times. I, 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 I'm, still trying to, I'm still trying to understand it sometimes. But I didn't want to have this doctorate to just say I had a doctorate. This is in ministry leadership. And with ministry leadership comes taking the opportunity to train leaders. Um, too often, the, this church, I'm talking about the Seventh-day Adventist church, we won't move out the way and give space for the next generation. We stay in it way too long. And if I want to be the leader that I believe that God has asked me to be, God has called us to make leaders. Amen? And so in this, one day, uh, uh, Pastor Jimmy, uh, uh, Pastor Johnson, even myself, we have to get out the way. Na <laughs> Pastor Natalie will still be around. You know, but we got to get out the way so that other leaders can take control uh, and, and, and the church still be safe. Amen? Amen? Today is August 26th. It is a special day. Today is my father's birthday and uh, 85 years old today. He was, he was on his way here, but my mother said they wanted to go to Patrick's church. So I recognize. I was going to say that Patrick might be more important, but, but I recognize that my dad knows who to listen to. It's also my 22nd anniversary today. So, So when we first moved here, we were in our seventh year. Now we're in our 22nd year. And Leslie, I checked the numbers the other day based on a position that was just afforded to me that I can't talk about yet. But it's 30 years that I've been in ministry this year. And um, this is what we call RPC Gray. We call this RPC Gray. But we have spent uh, 22 years together. Um, and I uh, just want you to know that I'm in trouble because last night I spoke at Oakwood University. Bless your heart. And some of you may be wondering, how did we get here? Well, we drove. And we got here about an hour and some ago. And my wife looked at me and said, um, this is how I'm spending my anniversary? Paris, Paris, gotcha, Doc. My man said Paris, so here we go. So, honey, ha happy anniversary to you, <laughs> to us. 
Before we look at this word, I wanted to share with you that we had the opportunity of giving 450 of my books out free to freshmen that were there. And, and, um, uh, and I, no, you're not getting this free. And so I wanted to just share, share with you that God has allowed me to write a book uh, and now almost coming up to a year called The 21 Day Reset. One of the reasons why I wrote it is because I realized that as a pastor that I'm not perfect. Ne neither would your elders are perfect, neither are family members perfect, neither are senators perfect. <laughs> and in light of that, um, I wrote something that was for myself, not for anybody else. And as I wrote it, uh, I, I put it down and I said, wow, if this can help me in 21 days, not to be perfect, but to reset certain things in my life, then maybe I can put something together. And uh, we put this together, uh, well, we, m myself and the Holy Spirit, put this together, and it is a 21-day reset, resetting your life from the book of John. John has 21 chapters in it. And in every day, it, there is a nugget given to you, but you have to read the, the whole chapter of John. So that by the end you finish the 21 days, you will end up reading the full book of John. Amen? Amen? We realize that folk don't listen. They just like to read without reading the Bible. So another book was, was, was uh, uh, prepared with the book of John inside of it. And so at the end of the service, uh, uh, Pastor, I ask that we just have little flyers at the end of the service that they can get where you'll know how to uh, uh, get, get your book. Or you can order it and what have you. But today, but today... Um, it's not about that. It's just that I always feel funny about sharing my book with people. And someone told me that it's your intellectual um, property that you ought to share with individuals. And I just wanted to share that with everyone today. And so, if you turn your Bibles with me, or if we can follow together, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter what, everybody? In Luke chapter 10. And we want to start with verse... Um, I want to start with uh, verse 25. Now, one of the reasons why I love this word is because I realize that Jesus ended up telling this story after he sent the 70 out. After he sent the 70 out. And even though we're not going to start there, I, I mean, even though we're not going to go there, it is important to understand that the 70 individuals or the 70 disciples that Jesus sent out, they came back with good news. The good news was that, my goodness, the Spirit is with us. They came back to say that the devils were afraid of them. And, and, I mean, and, and it's amazing how when they came back with good news for Jesus, Jesus, uh, it, it was, he, he, um, I'm sorry, the 70 brought energy to this movement that Jesus is still expecting us to do. Now, the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because it's amazing how Seabrook Church can move forward in the movement of God, and it only takes one person to mess it up. Can be the, the fly in the ointment. You ever had a good board meeting and, and someone just messed up the board meeting? Oh, not here. Right. I understand. Not here. So let, let, me switch it, let me switch it around. You ever had a good worship meeting? Do we know the worship meetings y'all have on Wednesdays? And, and just one person would just mess it up? No. You know, just one person would mess it up? I'm talking to the worship committee. It wouldn't be you, wouldn't it? Okay. Because I'm just trying to tell you, I was going well. Are you here yet? Where are you? Are you coming? Where are you? Are you say, Listen, I'm coming to church. I'm here, okay? I just want you to know Valerie Swan likes to order people around. She's had to tell her over and over again, I'm driving now. Where are you? Good luck road. Did you turn yet? It's a left. It always takes one person. But the Bible tells us that while Jesus was explaining certain things and, and really in a good mood, and, and I'm, I'm afraid sometimes because we never look at Jesus as being in a good mood. We always talk about conflict and dealing with Pharisees and dealing with individuals. But I need you to know there are certain places in the word of God where Jesus is in a good mood. The 70 comes back with good news. 
That's why sometimes I love meetings, right? Sometimes in, in the conference when we have meetings, I, I love meetings when it said, is there anything good that can come out of Seabrook? <laughs> and, this, and, and then someone would say something that would make you feel as if, are you doing what you need to be doing? It, it's almost like being married for 22 years. I'm already in the doghouse. You know, I'm already in the doghouse. <laughs> That's right. I'm moving from the doghouse to the outhouse. Is that what you say? <laughs> Yo, man, Elder Johnson's, Pastor Johnson's preaching with me today. Because Sister Johnson back there said, don't, don't, don't mess this up. Okay, Damien, don't mess this up. In this, the Bible takes us to verse 25. And I'm going to share this with you, that I'm not coming here just to talk to you. I believe that when you leave here, you have to leave here different than how you've come in. So, Father, bless us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible declares, and a, behold, a certain lawyer. A certain what, everybody? A certain lawyer stood up and tested him. We already know that Luke, getting the word from Peter, okay, Luke was not a disciple of Jesus. He was a disciple of Peter. And when we look at this, he, he, he is saying at this point that the reason why he's asking this question is to test him. Teacher, what should I do? What should I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, I want to be careful because I recognize there's some professors in here, but I also want you to recognize that there's nothing you can do to gain eternal life. Amen. You have it already. Oh, my goodness. We've been teaching this gospel of doing, 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 till I'm finding out now in my 50s. Do you know what I said? I'm finding out in my 50s that I was already saved. The Sunday folk got it right, and we need to catch up. You ever hear when folks say, I'm saved, I'm saved, and we as Adventists, we say, no, 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 communion. No, 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 Sabbath. No, 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 jewelry. No, no, no. So, listen, I need you to understand that you are, are already saved. I want you to know the tuition has been paid. Amen. The only way for you to be lost is for you to reject what Christ has done for you. That's what the Bible teaches. So, 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 so growing up and feeling like the Sabbath will save you or not, it is not true. We keep the Sabbath out of obedience. Come on, somebody. We, 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 we dress a certain way out of obedience. We, we, we don't wear jewelry. Listen, we didn't say we wore jewelry just because there was something wrong with adornment. It's just that you don't know how to adorn yourselves. So there's nothing wrong with jewelry, there's something wrong with you. What I'm sharing with you, though, that God has called each one of us, listen closely, that if we're going to be individuals in this last day, we need to be different and look different from everybody else. Not strange. Not strange. And the reason why I say that, because if you look at the different colors that came down here, somebody stay with me now, this International Day, am I correct? When we look at the different colors and the different cultures that came down here, it's amazing how God can deal with us in our culture, but we can't deal with one another. The Bible declares, again, and uh, you ready? And an elder, a board member, a manual lover, <laughs> stood up and tested him. And the Bible says, teacher, not God, not Lord, but teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The Bible says, he said unto him, it is written in the law. Watch this now. What is written in the law? Because if you are a lawyer, you should know, come on somebody, you should know the law. Now, one thing I recognize about your pastors, and it ought to be this way of every pastor in the Seventh-day Adventist church, when someone comes to talk about something they don't like about church and bring the manual, I don't bring mine. I know the manual. If you bring yours, you don't know it. If I get on a plane, and the pilot is reading the manual, I'm gone. You understand where I'm coming from? So here we find 
that a lot of people like to bring the manual, but Jesus said, if you know the law, you know the law already. He says, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? In other words, if you're reading the law, what is your interpretation of it? Because Jesus likes to get you thinking, but church don't want you to think. I'm, listen, I'm going to be careful because I want to come back. How do you read it? How do you read? Listen, how do you read the seventh day is the Sabbath? How do you read the Sabbath? And the reason why I'm saying that is because I grew up the sun being way in the sky. And as long as it was six o'clock, it was Sabbath. Anybody? Come on, Caribbean folk. As long as it was six, it was Sabbath. And you couldn't tell your parents, hey, mom, dad, the sun is still up. Me no care about sun. Me no care about sun. <laughs> then I found out when I went to Oakwood University, Oakwood College, that when we went down there cruise, we found out that the churches down there, those southern churches, they, they said it's Sabbath. Why? Because it's six o'clock. I said, wait, I thought... That this only happened in the Caribbean. But I found out that they dropped us off in different places. <laughs> How do you read it? How do you see it? Verse 27 says, and he answered, and he answered, you shall love the Lord. Remember now, the person asking the question had the answer. But it's amazing that he had the answer, but didn't know the answer. We have 28 doctrines in our church worldwide, internationally. And do you recognize that many of the doctrines that was put into play was put into play by people of the same nationality? When I came to Maryland, I, I, and remember, I'm from New York. If I was on a movie line, a theater line, as a pastor in New York, you would be disfellowship, banned, give me your license. Did you see, and worse than that, did you see Brother Graham's son? I'm a pastor, grown, children. We were taught we couldn't go to the movies, and culturally, we were taught why. Not biblically, culturally, traditionally, that if you went in there, come on, somebody. How readest thou the law? But he answers and said, and I'm going to tell you right now, folks, I want you to like me. I do want you to like me. I do. But I'm going to be honest with you. Um, um, there's some laws that... Men have made and made God liable for the laws. The Bible clearly shows, and I'm not telling you whether it's right or wrong to go to the movies. What I'm saying is that we have a different generation who's asking questions that don't know the answer. But you know the answer, and you cannot answer internationally. So the Bible teaches... And he's answering, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. Watch this, everyone. And thy neighbor as thyself. Now, this man said this, and Jesus dissects this. This is one of the reasons, Pastor, I believe, pastors, I believe that Sabbath school should be this full. Because this is when you dissect. This is when you talk. This is when you argue. This, this is when you argue. This is, this is when, you, when you leave with an understanding. What you're getting in this uh, service is your pastors speaking and many of us not going back to check them. They want to be checked. You ever hear when Pastor Jimmy speaks? He doesn't even raise his voice. I think one time I heard him raise his voice. I think. And, and he was moving real quick. He was moving real quick. And I said, look at Jimmy move. <laughs> Every time I listen to a sermon from your pastors, you don't even need, listen, you don't even need in this church guest speakers. You don't. But they need, but they need to be checked. 
they are, they are putting sermons together to be checked. Why? Because they're fallible just like you. So now Jesus is getting him to answer what he is saying. The Bible clearly says that, that, that uh, um, uh, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, thou hast answered correctly. Do this and thou shalt what everybody? Thou shalt live. Do this and thou shalt live. He's saying if you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, it's not enough. Oh man. I mean, look at the text, family. The text, the text, let's go back one, family. Let's go back one. The Bible clearly says that he says, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind. It does not end there. And too often, in our churches today, it ends there. Because the Bible is clearly teaching us to love thy neighbor the same way you love yourself. And I declare that if you're doing nothing for your neighbor, then you don't love yourself. Or maybe you're loving yourself more than God. Even the word, listen, even the word of God tells, and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, but you have calling yourself gods. The Bible show, shows at this point, then he asked the question again, tempting Jesus again. Then who is my neighbor? Who is my what, everybody? Who is my neighbor? Well, you see, the man knew who was the church, but he didn't know who was his neighbor. Well, listen what this word says. I'm only going by the word. He says, let me tell you a story. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that in every culture, if you want to get a child upset, okay, I just need a tissue if, if you don't mind. If, if, if you want to get a child upset, tell them a story. Now, let me, let me be straight with you, right? I'd rather have a beaten. Thank you. Give, give me the beating, then tell me a story. Sick and tired of long stories too, you know. <laughs> my, my, oh, my folks, they won't, they want to tell you stories of, you, look how your shoes, how you stand up on the back of your shoes. I said, my, mom, it's, yeah, thank God for Crocs. I'm just saying, you know, she would say, why are you standing on the back of your shoes? You know how much money I pay for them shoes? And I said, Mom, it's, it's just shoes. And she says, oh. You know where I went to school from my house? Uh, it's, it's walk, me walk, you know. It's walk, me walk, you know. The one pair of shoes that she says she have is just for church. So I said, what's the other one for? I didn't have another pair. <laughs> just telling stories. Thank you. Telling stories upon stories. And, and I want you to understand that the stories that are being told, it has a meaning. But the stories that Jesus always tells have a heavenly meaning not just an earthly meeting. And he invokes change. Which means a story is never given unless it invokes change. And so Jesus then says, you have answered correctly. You know the book. You know the manual. But do you love your neighbor? Well, who is my neighbor? Because they were taught back then that if you were not an Adventist, you were not saved. I'm so glad for this new initiative that this church has in reaching the unchurched. Huh? And don't be upset when the, initi when, when the initiative works and more people from the outside comes in. I, 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 was, I, was, 
I was bamboozled at this new church that I'm at. Can I share this with you? And then, and then we'll, we'll try to land a plane. Listen closely. I'm a suit-wearing brother. I like my suits. You think Pastor Johnson likes suits. I love my suits. <laughs> For there's a gentleman that cuts my suits. Ah, uh, this is my jewelry. Oh, I'm not coming back, bro. I can openly say this is my jewelry. Oh, today, I want you to know that my clothes were set out before I went to Alabama. So when I come back, I just put my suit on and get ready to go. You should have seen me in the mirror. Which tie? Which so-and-so? Honey, what are you wearing so I can exit with you? You know what I'm saying? I get to this church called Community of Hope, and the first day that we're all together, I'm in a suit. And everyone is in jeans. <laughs> torn jeans. Anybody with me? Yes. No tie. As my mother would say, ears ring. <laughs> Y'all got the wrong one today. And it forced me not to compromise, but to recognize that if I love my neighbor as myself, I will consider that some folks who've been coming in can't wear what I wear. I'm not talking about choices right now. There's some folks who rather not wear ties because I don't want to wear it. You know, some, some folks, don't, they won't wear their ties to church or wear a suit to church, but you will to the White House. I ain't scared of y'all. But there's, there are individuals who just don't have it. Are oh, you understand where I'm coming from? And if I'm pastoring them, I shouldn't drive. If I'm pastoring people who don't have the economic um, 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 fortitude that I have, I should not drive my new brand, brand shiny car in that spot. Now, I'm just sharing with you that the church has money, but, and my wife has a nice car and I drive hers, you know, so. <laughs> but if you love your neighbor as thyself, then you should be with your neighbor. Not act like you're better than your neighbor. Amen. This man was, was, was told, was taught that he should be, let no, me sorry, that he is better. This is why when you look at Mark 6 and 7, you would find that when we go to the marketplace, when we go to the mall, mm, and we come home from the mall, we wash our hands from here to our elbows. If this was ceremonial. Why? Just in case I came in contact with someone who was not like me. That's in, that's, in, that's in Mark. And this is why the disciples got in trouble. The disciples got in trouble because they kept hanging out with non-Jews. And the Pharisees says, your people that follow you don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus says, I hope you're ready for this. It was Jesus said this, not me. Jesus said, listen, Uno, listen, listen. Jesus said that at least if my disciples eat, and they have dirt going in their mouths. It will come out in the bathroom. That's what Jesus said in the Bible. He said, but you Pharisees, you can't get rid of yours. That's what he said. Who is your neighbor? Man, Jesus then said a certain man. Come on, everybody. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Listen to the story, because you, you, you know it already, but I want you now. Listen, you know the story already, but, uh, uh, but now, how readest thou? Says a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. That's what the Bible says. They stripped him of his culture, I'm sorry, of his raiment, You know how many cultures have been stripped in the name of Adventism? You're telling me 
that you can't do certain things in your culture in the name of Adventism? It's, it's tough sometimes to give up your God-given tradition, to join a tradition that's not yours and not biblical. And so the word is telling us that many of us, when we join the church, we have fallen among thieves. They stripped you of your raiment. I'm just telling you what the word says. And wounded you. This is why many of your family members don't want to come to your church because you no longer dance at family parties. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Hold on. I, whew. I got about 20 more minutes. Y'all better hang on. My greatest regret, I'm going to say my greatest regret was not dancing at my wedding. Because, I'm a, was a, because I was a pastor. It is my greatest regret. And some of you are saying, but pastor. But no, 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 no. No, 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 not pastor, because when my wife and I had issues in our marriage in our, th in our fourth and fifth year, right, no one came to us to heal our marriage. So when, so when it got healed and I decided to wear a wedding band now, you may say to me, well, why are you wearing a wedding band? Because God healed my marriage. We wanted to do something to do that. Look, I'm just telling you. Now, I don't wear it to church because some of y'all would judge. But I wear it on the street because street people are more open than we are. Well, I'm, I'm just being open with you. Listen, 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 listen. I want you to understand that, that it leaves us wounded when you can't dance with my family. My grandmother used to dance and, and listen to good music. I'm not talking about jaga jaga music. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the, the tradition, I mean, the cultural music that God can't be there with. I remember the days of, of, of holding my grandmother and, she's, and, and while the music is going and we're eating, we're eating non-vegetarian food. <laughs> that my grandmother will walk by, will walk by and, 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 and take, <sighs> sorry. And, and take my hand and, and, and dance with me. And, 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 and I feel like if I could dance with my grandmother again, I wouldn't care what you all would say. Because I know this is the, the, end, the end of the sermon, but when I see my grandmother again, boy, I believe that there's a reggae section in heaven. <laughs> So, so there's some things that has been robbed from our culture that the Bible even says in John chapter 4, John chapter 2, that, that Jesus went to a wedding and spent time there and, there and they were drinking something. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to, oh no, 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 no. I'm not going to, listen, I'm not going to be careful. Because I'm 30 years into this. I have my doctorate. I'm, I'm learning. And, and I want to share this with you, why it's so important to read the Bible for yourselves and govern yourselves accordingly. I've been taught that that was grape juice. But according to the Bible, not Sister White, not Sister White, original language, and I'm going to share this. I'm going to boast for a second. Um, I, I, my, my, my degree is in biblical language, so I know Hebrew and Greek. So let me share this with you. The Bible says, who would give the last, the best of the drink last? We usually do it first. Listen what the Bible says. So that they would not, when they get the worst one, they will already be too happy to not, 
to not know whether the last one was good enough or not. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Now, this is not a theological discussion. And the reason why it's not, because that won't save you, whether you drink or not, won't save you. Uh-oh. It, some of y'all have that white rum in the back of your bed and be saying, it's, it's. Poor, Pastor, poor Pastor Jimmy is looking at me like, what is he saying? What is he saying? Y'all know when y'all be playing dominoes, bam, bam. Give me the Guinness, give me the Guinness. The Bible says that we are stripped and many of us in the church because we can't exercise our culture, we are left half dead. I know I took it out of his, out of his context and I'm not saying that we should be a people that can do anything we want to. But what I'm saying is be careful to be stuck on being an Adventist and not a Christian. We are producing disciples of Jesus, not disciples of the church. Are you with me? We are a church that believes in dress reform. Anybody with me so far? We, we still believe in health reform. Anybody with me so far? We still believe in all of these things, but we need to teach the next generation how it's done so they can do it with a relationship with Christ and not just a relationship with us. The Bible says in verse 31, in verse 31, the Bible says, and by chance, oh, and by chance, there came down a certain pastor. He came down that road. And when you see by chance, you'll recognize that biblically Jesus is not talking about by chance. Jesus doesn't do anything by chance. Which means, in the parable, it was spirit-led that he should go so he can do his business for his neighbor. Yeah. The Bible declares that when he saw him, he passed on the other side. The operative word is not pass. The operative word is he saw him. And the word says, watch this now, and the word says in verse 32, and likewise. Huh. The Levite, when he was at the same place, came and looked on him and passed on the other side. Now, I don't know which is worse, to pass by and say, I'm not going, or to go by and pass. There are so many of us that don't understand that it is okay not to have a church service and feed the, the hungry. It's okay to do that kind of work. Oh, have mercy. The Bible is clearly showing us that a priest, a priest went on the other side. The Bible says that a Levite, and a Levite is a, fa listen, they become Levites by family order. But he saw and looked, watch this, he saw the need and ignored the need. The Bible clearly says, but, ah, my gosh, but, a, listen, but a certain Samaritan. Now, now, I want you to understand this, that the Samaritan to the Jews are the lowest of the lows. Oh, have mercy. You know, um, West Indians, when you come here and you teach your children not to hang around black Americans, Come on, I can say it, you can't. You're among your family and they call you Yankee. Or Cruz, uh, uh, you marry a woman who speaks another language as an American, as a black American, and the black Ameri American would say to you, Cruz, you can't marry her because you don't know what she's saying. God. Brother, you could be in love as you want to be. Your folks would say, you can't marry her. Why? Because she speaks another language. Watch this. It's not the language. It's just in case she wants to say something about you you don't understand. <laughs> or someone meets someone who's white. Come on, who's Caucasian. 
And we say to them, no, 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 no. They enslaved us, but the guy you're in love with has not enslaved you. <laughs> or maybe they should. <laughs> the issue is, you, know, you ever hear when black, black women say, oh, there ain't no black man, there ain't no black man out there, so I'm going to find me a white one. That's your problem. Don't do that. <laughs> you got to let that thing happen by chance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but who do we think we are? Who do we think we are to, to say that because someone speaks another language, they're not good enough? Or sitting in a meeting and say, we've got to do something because the Hispanics are taking over. I ain't scared of y'all. Y'all can't save me. Did you know, we're, we're landing the plane. Did you know that the, uh, the, the, we say that the Caucasians have left the Adventist church no, they just found a place where you're not. And do you know that the black Americans is the same now? And the second generation Caribbean, we can't find them? Our churches are not growing by evangelism. It's growing by, are you ready? It's, it's, by, it's, it's by moving. And what's happening here is that our problem here is that we need to recognize that what, who we call Samaritans is God's people. The other day I went to do a funeral. <laughs> went to do this funeral and I'm going to tell you, I've never been to a funeral like this in my life. I mean, it was one guy, it was so crazy. I'm going to give you a, it was so crazy. Now one of the guys got up there and said, um, my man who's in heaven, you know, talking to my man in heaven, said, if you see my wife up there, right, don't bother her, leave her alone. <laughs> because I know you liked my wife when she was down here. <laughs> I, went to a, I went to a funeral, that same funeral, one guy got up and said, man, Man, we argued all the time. I couldn't stand him, but rest in peace. <laughs> it was just amazing. And what I began to do, please listen to me. What I began to do was look at them and compare to the funerals I go to. And I began to judge them. And look at them and say that they, they're different. they of a different economical. They are not as religious they don't know the church lingo. I saw Samaritans. God asked me the question before I got up to speak, who do you think you are? They're mine. Who, who do you think you are? Who is your neighbor? The Bible says, but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed. I don't want you to miss this. As he journeyed, which means this Samaritan was on his way somewhere. And the Bible clearly shows us, watch this, that, that he came where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Stay with me, family. And went to him and bound up him, uh oh, bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wedding wine on, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. I want to pause there for a second. I need you to know in our vernacular that, that this man, <laughs> this Samaritan, saw someone who needed help and didn't check that criteria first. Didn't check where they were from first. Didn't do all of these things. The Bible says he saw him and had compassion on him. And when he had compassion on him, put him in his BMW. That's what it says. And, and, and what's, what's scary about this is that if you look at it, if the man was on his beast, that means the man walked the rest of the way. It's showing us that not only did he have compassion on him, but he took care of his wounds. It, it, it says that he put him on his own beast, brought him to an inn, and he took care of him. Watch this now. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host and said to him, take care of him. 
and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, when I come again, I will repay thee. Pause there for a second. Man, let me tell you something. I was in shout mode when I heard this. I recognize that Jesus considered himself the Samaritan. Yo, this is crazy. I've been preaching this thing forever. And recognize, not that Jesus only considers himself a Samaritan, but he knew that the people he was ministering to didn't like Samaritans. And he said, if you don't like them, you can't like me. It's amazing what he's saying. Not only that, he's telling the church today. He's telling this church today. I'm not talking about all the other churches that's worshiping right now. I'm talking about everybody who decided to wake up and, and journey to this place right now. That God is saying to each one of you that there's nobody uh, 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 less than you, worse than you. In fact, the only reason why you're saved is because of Jesus Christ. We're not better than anyone else, but we're better off. The Bible says that he, that he took this person and, and didn't take him to an inn, but brought them to Seabrook. I'm telling you what the Bible says. The Bible says that we need to pick up folk wounded, messed up, and, and bring them to the inn. It may cost you a pence or two, huh? but you need to bring them to the inn. And we need to take care of them. Discipleship. Come on, somebody. And when we take care of them, watch this. The Bible says when you take care of them, when I'm going to leave. And when I leave, I'm going to come back. And when I come back, if you are doing what you're supposed to do, I will repay you with eternal life. Churches are empty today because we don't know the concept of the innkeepers. You are the host. God has called you to be the host. The reason why this church was finished and it looks the way it looks because it's the perfect hosting space. It hosts drug addicts. It hosts, come on somebody, it hosts folks who are gay. Do you know what I said? It hosts everyone. You may not like gay people, but God loves them. Even those who are black in this church right now, if you're black, if you're black, like at least like me, <laughs> you, you couldn't get a license to pastor before 1917. You couldn't do that. And now we become officials and forget from whence we've come. Hmm? God has called each one of us to be innkeepers. And it's amazing what he says. He says, and when I return, this same Jesus who you see going, come on somebody, who see going in the clouds is coming back and he's coming back in like manner. And when he comes back, you need to be taken care. Come on. You need to be taking care of all those who don't have what you have. The Bible, Jesus asked the question, which now of these three? Thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, the one that showed mercy. And then he says, go and do likewise. Do you notice it was different from the first answer? Listen closely. The first answer was, do this and you shall live. (laughs) Do this and you shall live. That means, remember, he was asked, listen, he was asking, he was answering the question that if you do this, you will inherit eternal life. That was the last question, the first question he asked. The last question was, who's my neighbor? Mm -hmm. And he says, if you would take care of the ones who are not like you, say hello to the ones who are not like you. Hug someone who's not like you. Accept someone who is not like you. Hey, the other day, when we, just last night when we were leaving to come to um, 
uh, to come here. Wow, because we just got, we just drove here, okay? I know we're crazy. I know we're crazy. We saw a, a little girl. She came to me. She said, Pastor, thank you for that message. It was so beautiful. And she said, thank you for that message. It was so beautiful. My wife and I looked at her like, oh, my goodness. I'm going to tell you, she was so beautiful. Am I right, Miss Wynn? She was stark beautiful. I'm talking about she was beautiful. Let me, let me explain what beautiful, what beautiful was. Well, she looked like a doll baby. And, you know, you, uh, you know, she looked like a doll baby. And let me tell you something. We're so wounded that when I was in my 20s, I would have never looked at her as beautiful. She was chocolate. Yo, I'm sorry, she was dark chocolate, berry chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Like um, uh, Claudette there. I don't know, I don't know. What? I mean, yo, ch- trying to find a chalk. I'm talking about chalk. See chocolate right there? Chocolate right there. Now li- listen, but when I was growing up, I was told, listen, when I was growing up, I was told that, that I'm just saying, can I please, that your wife, was, it was, the, was what I was supposed to be looking for so that my babies would come out cute. Oh, am I? Maybe, I'm, maybe it's me. Is it me? Well, we're talking about wounded. We're wounded like that. I mean, I mean, you look at, look at Pastor Natalie. Chocolate. And she, and she got vanilla in there. So that... That's good stuff. Huh? Hold on, hold on to her. So they now have beautiful babies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but these are some of the things we were told. But we're wounded this way. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I remember long hair was everything. But man, as I got older, I was like, no hair is better. <laughs> and then I recognized. Now, what was important to Jesus must be important to us. That every soul matters. That every individual matters. Our bank account doesn't make us greater. Where we come from, it doesn't make us greater. What makes us great is the great God we serve. Don't be upset with me. I'm not being political when I say this. In this story, almost all lives mattered. In that story, almost all lives mattered, Michelle. Almost. And to Jesus, honestly, all lives matter. I'm not being political. So somebody's going to play this, take that little clip, and call me a traitor. Go ahead. I've heard many things your pastor said I can clip off and call him a traitor. (laughs) All lives matter. Amen. A Jamaican cannot make pylori. What's good for you may not be good for me. Someone dr- is drinking, what is called, what's the, uh, the bark from the tree? The, the Marby. Some of y'all are like, it's the best drink ever. I'm saying, don't touch it. I've never had the best chicken. I thought our Popeye's chicken was good. Peruvian chicken? And what God is really saying to us is that I've created all these individuals so that you will see who I am. It mattered when we sinned, Jimmy, when we sinned. And it was his plan from the story of redemption, the book Story of Redemption, read it sometime, that it was Jesus' plan. Leslie, it was Jesus' plan. It wasn't the Father's plan. It wasn't the Spirit's plan. It was Jesus' plan that if Paul should mess up, his life mattered. It it, it mattered to Jesus that when I fall, he's there to pick me up. It matters to Jesus that when we see other people fall, we don't judge. 
People may look different. We don't judge. Waiting for the day we have more multicultural churches. And it, it's not going to happen in this generation. The next generation don't want to worship with the same kind. The next generation wants to be with white people and, and black people and Caribbeans. Not Jamaicans, but Caribbeans. And <laughs> What a day it will be when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. Yes. Can I go old school before we close? Yes. Because, because what God is teaching us in Revelation is that the, what happened at the Tower of Babel, there is a completion at the second coming. Amen. Where there was a split there, there's a coming together there. And whether you believe in the 144,000 is a literal number or, or a figurative number, I don't really care as long as I'm on the inside part of the gate. And what a day it's going to be, Revelation 20 and 21 says, when there'll be no more sorrow. You see your mom, huh? No more sickness. No more hospitals. Huh? You know, death touches everyone internationally. And so does birth. And what a day it's going to be when we get to live forever understanding each other's culture. What a day it's going to be. And you will never know until you get there. I didn't say unless you get there. I said until you get there. And so... All lives matter to God, so it must matter to this church. I'm sorry, I don't speak about our churches in general. I speak about the one I'm at. Amen. That I can't wait <laughs> till you have to break out a wall again or start another church and another church and another church because the same mantra is to save those who are just like me, not who's other than me. Because somebody may not have money and be poor, but we may be poor in spirit. God is calling each one of us to recognize that all lives matter. Which neighbor, which one was the right neighbor? And the man answered correctly again, the one that showed mercy. Can I share with you that I know this man that showed mercy to each one of us? He saw us where we are, huh? Took us from where we are, saving us from where we are. And even though we deserve death, he shows mercy, girl. He shows mercy. He's continuing to show mercy. And then he says, if you confess your sins, right? Yeah. Listen to this mercy. Listen to this merciful statement, Miss Trinidad. Listen to this. Listen, listen. He says, if you confess your sins, that's it, right? If you confess your sins, uh, yeah, you know I saw you. I, saw, I, just look, I look right in your face, and you know I'm coming right to you, my man here. Listen, listen to me. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us, to forgive us of our sins. And to pray. And, 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 and before we go into this, this is, this is my wife's Spanish teacher. You know, you mess me up, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pray, but you mess me up. My wife told me the other day she wants to go to, what is it, is it, Equ where, where is it? Ecuador? Where? Argentina. She wants to go to Argentina without me. <laughs> I didn't do it. No, yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because you taught her Spanish, and she's constantly trying to perfect her Spanish, so she wants to go away for six months. And six months without me. <laughs> you must confess your sins. And, yes. <laughs> and the Bible says he's faithful. Huh? Warren, Warren, he's faithful. And he's just. And, and, and when the Bible says that he's just, before I pray, you know he's really not just? Because if he was just, we'd be messed up. Huh? If he was truly just, we'd all be gone. So I thank God, Leslie, for not being just. But he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Boy, your boy's getting big, eh? Man. And I want to thank God for not skipping over me because I'm a Samaritan. But by identifying me, identifying with me, that my life matters. I believe there may be someone here today, right? 
who may feel like your life haven't been mattering with God. Maybe, maybe you have been in a place, in a space where you have not been in that relationship you want to be with him, so you, you don't know that your life matters with him. I'm sharing with you that your life matters with God. My goodness, he loves you so much that if he had a refrigerator, he would take your picture and put it on it. That's how much he loves us. And maybe there's somebody here. You may not be a part of this church. You may be a visitor. You may be in the overflow room and, and the Holy Spirit is talking to you about somewhat, somehow changing your life because it matters. I'm going to ask you to do something real crazy. Maybe you want your life to be changed. Maybe you want to start over. You came for International Day, but have now found out that you're internationally saved. If God is talking to you, right? He's saying to you right now, give him your life. Give him a chance. Turn from something you're stuck on and give him your life because it matters. I'm going to be so audacious to say this. And maybe there's somebody here that just, just needs a, a prayer of deliverance. Because it matters. Maybe there's an issue you're going through in your life. Maybe you don't believe in him the way you should believe in him. Whatever it may be, today is your day to make sure that all the boxes are checked off. To make sure that you are part of that great international party on the sea of glass I want to pray for you so if that person is you you want to start all over again I'm going to ask you to slip out of your seat and come down so we can pray over your life a deliverance prayer God's got you your life matters is there anyone praise God is there anyone come on just move just move just move just move just move. Just move. We're not, we're not, listen, folks, we're not talking about baptism right now. We're not talking about baptism right now. We'll, we'll get there. We're talking about the, the fact that there's, there's something that's keeping you from the sea of glass. You want to move from a church membership to relationship with Jesus. I want to pray over your life right now. Right now. Thank you. I want to pray over your life. You may be a member. That's fine. It's between you and God. Just move. Just move. We we'll pray over your life. Lord, I love you more. Mercy. Maybe there's somebody who feels like your life doesn't matter. Slip out of your seat. Get out of that room in the back. Get out of that room in the back. Get up and come down here. I want to pray over your life. Deliverance prayer, y'all. Deliverance prayer. Wherever you are, just move. Just move. Just move. Lord, I love you every day of my life. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I love yes, you, sir. Jesus. Gotta have you, Jesus. Can't make it without you. you, Lord Jesus. Just before we pray, is there, is there, just one more, just move out of your seat. You know, it's funny, when we see folk move up, you know what we say? I'm going to tell you what we say. Look at the Samaritans. Look at the Samaritans. What I'm saying to you is, look at your neighbors. Don't let this moment pass. I'm telling you right now that whatever the issue is, we're praying your deliverance, not your baptism. So, Father God, Father God, we come before you right now because we recognize that you are a God that loves us no matter what. No matter what. Your, your children, your people, your loved ones decided to, to get out of their seat and just make a, a, a visual effort to say, God, I matter to you. 
What does it take? And so God, I'm asking you now that you'll hear them by their actions of moving. There's someone who walked down here because they have a habit that they need to, be, to get rid of. There's someone that came down here because they have issues in their lives. There's someone that came down here just to say thank you for mattering. <laughs> there, there may be someone who came down here because they're struggling between belief and unbelief. Somebody came down here because they, there's something that they need. And then there's somebody that came down here because there's something they need to be delivered from. God, I'm asking you now that you would touch them even now. Touch their feet, touch their head, touch their shoulders, touch their souls. Let them know that this preacher can't speak enough, but that your Holy Spirit can take it from here. God, I ask you that you forgive us of our sins. Come on, God. I know you can do it. Forgive us of our sins. There is no one standing here that low that you can't save. There's no habit too terribly forming that you can't reform. And so God, in a special way, I know we've taken up a lot of time, but there's people here that's asking you to forgive them of their sins. As an intercessory prayer, I'm now asking God, would you forgive us of our sins right now, right where we're standing? Please God, forgive us of our sins. Would you cleanse us even now? Would you make us clean before you even now? So that we will recognize our relationship with you. So God, I'm asking that you bless every individual that got up. Now God, I'm asking for a sabotage. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm asking for a sabotage on their plans. That's unlike your plan. I'm asking you, Lord, that you, you, you'll help them to be stronger. That, that every international spot and every international place will be made low so that they'll be looking forward to that space in heaven. That place. No matter, it doesn't matter any, anymore where they come from. Now it matters where they're going. So God bless them. Strengthen them. Be with them. Hold them in the palm of your hands and have them recognize that their step to the front is their first step to, their, to them having a better relationship with you. So God, I'm asking now that you hover around them like never before. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Hold on before you go to your seats, right? Before you go to your seats. You've got to know, I'm too short, hold on a second. You've got to know that God got you. Don't go back to your seat and say, thank you for the prayer. The prayer can't work unless you do likewise. That's what the Bible says. Now go and do likewise. That's what the Bible says. Don't feel like this prayer was magical. It's not magical until you accept. So when you go back, recognize that any issue you have in your life, any unbelief, any, anything that's unlike Christ, you now got to go back and make it your reality. Erase some numbers. Huh? Get rid of some things. But more than that, add Christ. Is that all right? Now before you go back to your seats, I'm sorry, Pastor. Before you go back to your seats, I heard y'all, y'all got the baptismal pool filled, I mean, I mean, fixed. It took a long time to get that thing fixed. Where, where's the pool? Where's the pool? It's right here. You know how long it took to fix this pool? I've been in meetings where I'm, when they gonna fix the pool? We couldn't even move in because of the pool. Now you got the pool. So I gotta ask. I have to. Maybe there's someone here that needs to give their life to Christ in baptism. And, and you may not know what this is all about, but you want to give your life to Jesus. And according to the word, you got to hit the pool. Is there someone, just asking, is there someone here? Don't be emotional. Just think about it. Is there someone here who needs to be baptized in the next baptism to start their life all over with Christ? Is there anyone? I'm just asking, just don't, I don't want the moment to pass. Maybe you want to give your life to him again or start all over again and you want to be baptized anew with him. 
Is there anyone here? Just one. We don't need two people. We just need one. That's it, just one. Is there one that would love to give their life to Christ in baptism? If it's you, if it's you, and your stomach is turning, and your heart is beating fast, because you know it's you, as my grandmother would say, turn up! Just raise your hand right where you are, if that person is you. Don't let this moment pass. If not, it's okay. But if so, so let it be. Is there, is there one? Is there one? Is there one? It's okay. If, it's, if, if not, it's okay. I want to make sure that this moment doesn't pass. Is everybody safe? You ought to say amen. So Father, be with us. Bless us again. Strengthen us. Walk anew with us in Jesus' name. Let this church say amen and amen. All, all, all of your lives matter to Jesus. Praise God. Thank you so much, Pastor Graham, and thank you, Sister Graham, for being here today. I don't know how you guys do it. No sleep, just preaching. <laughs> wow. The deacons are going to receive our gifts of gratitude, our tithes and offerings. And for those of us in person here and in the overflow room, they will come and they will begin in the back here. If you have a next step form, let's say you decided you want to get Bible studies or answering the invitation for, to plan for baptism, put it in the offering plate. Fill out the form, it's right there, and we will receive it and get back to you. Let us pray one more time. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, Samaritan, who have come from heaven, Lord, to rescue us and to save us. And we look forward, Lord to your coming. In the meantime, thank you that we get to know that we are valuable and that everyone is valuable and to do our part, dear Lord, to alleviate suffering in this world. With thanksgiving we pray and give these gifts to your glory. Amen. You are the God of powerful. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe Jehovah you, I trust in you, oh Lord Jehovah you, I trust in you, I believe, I believe you, I trust, I trust in you.
my pain Goodbye to my heartache Whatever it is So long Yeah, so long You're not welcome here You're not welcome here How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will sing, how great, how great is our God? Yeah, sing how great. announcements before we close out in prayer. First on our announcement list, how many of our young people today are attending our Adventist schools? Can I see some of you stand? Because y'all started school this week. Let's see you stand up. If you're attending one of our Adventist schools, let's stand up. Let's stand up. These are our young people at the Seabrook Seventh-day Adventist Church. We're a Bible-believing church, and we believe in Christian education. You may sit down. Thank you, young people. It's not too late if your parents haven't submitted your fall 2023 tuition subsidy applications. All the information is in the newsletter and is available online, but the deadline, there sadly is a deadline, and it has to be submitted by August 31st in order for you to receive the funds. We just lifted an offering. Some of the offerings go to support the Christian education, to support our young people of this church. Now, parents have to be good and standing members of, the, of our church and at least be a member for six months in order to have your child have a blessing of that subsidy. We have something very special for tomorrow. What's happening tomorrow? A taste of Seabrook. So if you, ha you don't even have to cook tomorrow. You don't have to cook. You can come and buy a meal or two Freeze it up, save it up. You have food for you. So come out at four o'clock. There'll be activities. Just you don't want to miss it. But that's not all. What's happening today? Today at five o'clock, there's an opportunity to hear the universal language. One language, universal. What is it? Music. Music is the international language. We have international artists. You don't want to miss that. 
And I, uh, one more, there's something special happening next week, Labor Day weekend. The men of the church are having a cookout for all men and men in training. It's gonna be at Allen Pound Park, uh, and you'll look out for information at that in your newsletter and also via text. So now, let us stand to receive our benediction. That will be in part Hebrew and English. Y'all pray for me, I'm gonna try some Hebrew. So let us pray. <laughs> Yeva rekana Adonai vayish mereka. May the Lord God bless and keep you. May his light shine on you that you were able to reflect his light. May God show you grace and mercy. May God give you peace. And let there be peace on earth and let it begin as we depart in joy to live in the power of our risen Lord in the likeness of Jesus the Good Samaritan, and may we be great innkeepers. This is our prayer. Through the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So now, now that we know, we must share we must a share spread, spread the word of God's love. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. What a blessed day in the house of the Lord today. Can somebody, let's just give God a big hand today. Praise the Lord. Again, we want to thank Dr. Graham, his dear wife, Wendy Graham, for being here today and the sacrifice coming all the way from Oakwood. Man, I don't know where you get the energy from, but an hour of rest and preaching like that, God be praised. Amen. Amen. And the, the concert is at 5 p.m., I think, 5 p.m. today. So just so you know that. Well, God is good. God is good all the time. We're going to see you tomorrow, right? Taste of Seabrook tomorrow, 12 o'clock, right here. And we look forward to seeing you on next Sabbath. Online, we see you next Sabbath. God bless you. Have a blessed and wonderful week. up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord the one who made heaven and earth and he said he would not suffer thy foot thy foot to be moved the Lord that keepeth me he will not slumber nor sleep.